Okay, go ahead. Megan, I am really excited to talk with you. We, we're just getting to know each other, right? And, um, and we, we were brought together from uh, um, um, uh, Connor, who works with us. Uh, and I loved when he first introduced me to you. I loved hearing that you're working with tallow. Uh, it's for uh, skin and home care products. Um, and I really, I, I was very excited to be able to ask if you'd be a part of Organuary because we're all about uh, nose to tail during Organuary. Yes, we promote organs, but we're all about showing people how to use more of the animal. And you were doing that with the fat. So thank you for joining us on Organuary. Thank you for having me. Um, so I would love to just, I, I, I know a little bit about your bio, but I'd love for you to share it with everyone. I, I, it's, it's, um, and to share kind of why you you talked about like you're a very specific kind of personality and that you you really dig into kind of ancestral ways of um of how things were constructed or done in the past and I'd love to kind of get a feel a more of a feel of why you know and and how you came to uh, making products with tallow. Yes, it's been a beautiful journey. <laughs> um, so I'm Megan Raycamp. Um, I'm originally from Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I grew up there with my father. He was um, a military man, um, Green Beret during the Vietnam War. And he is um, an ethnic minority from the Central Highlands of Vietnam. Um, so he's an in indigenous um, descent from that area. Um, and my mother is indigenous to the Philippines. Um, the northernmost area in the Philippines. So they're both mountainous people and they met in Alaska. And so that's where um, I was born and raised. Um, and I just think growing up with my father, he just instilled so much of being in tune with seasons, um, being really in touch with nature and really listening and feeling and um, respecting nature and animals. Um, but then came, you know, I was 14 and I was delved into Buddhism and vegetarianism vegetarianism. So I was a vegetarian during my high school years, um, which in hindsight, I kind of regret. <laughs> because, well, but I mean, um, so many, so many people do that. So I, many people do that. And so it's like, you wouldn't yeah. have, you wouldn't be here if you hadn't had that, right? We need the contrast to then learn what we need, right? Totally, exactly. Um, I studied culinary school. I went, I studied culinary, went to culinary school there. Um, and then this is in high school, high school, you did that? I, uh, after high school, college. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then after college, I came to Berkeley to study holistic nutrition. Oh. Um, so here in the Bay area, I was cooking. I was working as um, a cook, working my way up to sous chef to executive chefs at different restaurants. Um, and then uh, in about 2010, I went to Maine to work on a farm. And there I met these young radical farmers who were raising their own livestock, um, canning lambskins and just doing all the traditional methods of homesteading, um, husbandry um, and using all parts of the animals. And at first I was, you know, as a vegetarian, I was like, okay, this is cool. I guess I could do this. Um, but I think that that planted the seed because when I came back to Berkeley, I started working at a um, community supported kitchen called Three Stone Heart. Yeah, that I know really, that. Um, right. Yeah. And so that was the first time I was introduced to Weston A. Price. Um, That's Jessica. Read, is that Jessica who runs that? Je Jessica Prentice for formally ran it. Yeah. Um, that's who I know. Yeah. A co-op. Yeah um a worker owned um space but yeah I, I mean reading uh nurturing traditions just blew my mind and I think everything clicked that whole being in sync with nature growing up in Alaska indigenous practices and then traditional ancestral diets and I was just illuminated that's awesome and so you you when you were doing your professional chefing in Berkeley area you were were you specializing in desserts like what was your specialty or were you doing savory I was doing both 
Um, oh, you were. So I actually was, yeah, yeah, I did, um, yeah, a lot of California cuisine, of course, because this is our area. Uh, so locavore, organic, seasonal. Uh, I did raw foods for a while. I helped out, um, helped start up Cafe Gratitude when they were here in San Francisco and Berkeley. Um, and I even moved on after Three Stone Hearth to be a um, French chocolatier. So okay. I did that for a while and that was really beautiful. Um, but even at Three Stone Hearth, I was doing, uh, you know, the nutrient dense pastries, I guess, or sweet desserts. <laughs> Yeah. Along with savory. Yeah. But so you summer solace tallow is the company that you now run and what, well, first of all, where did that name come from? Um, it was a play on the solstice. So, um, you know, I, I believe in the UK, they'll say, Oh, summer solace is another way of saying solstice. And I just thought that really conveyed you know, the beautiful grasses in the summer here in Northern California, the herbs, the sunshine, um, the pasture lands, and then also the soothing elements of a beautiful pasture-raised organic animal fat for the skin. Yeah. Oh, that is nice. Um, now, what brought you, so Weston A. Price got you kind of out of the veganism or the plant-based eating, got you kind of more in touch with you, the, your roots from in, in Alaska, but even took taking that further towards more ancestral um, kind of eating and, and products. So what made you land on, like, what was your very first product? Was it a soap or a lotion? What, what was it? So after, um, after I left Three Stone Hearth, I left my chocolatier uh, position. I was at my holistic dentist's office in Berkeley and I was just sitting there thinking, okay, well, what do I want to do next? Do I want to uh, be a bread maker? You know, just thinking what's my next step? Um, Cause I like to keep going. Um, and I it clicked at that moment as I was in the chair thinking, um, oh my gosh, that's because my friend's children uh would be suffering from eczema or diaper rash and then i just knew oh my gosh i could really really help them by incorporating my food-based knowledge my holistic health knowledge um and i created a cream and i went home and i literally spent like the day figuring out okay this is what i love this is what i want this is what i want to see in the world so it was a balm um essentially my hallow balm um, I sat there, I spent about that day figuring out what do I want and what sense I want to create and what blends. I ordered those products from organic sources. I knew the ranch I wanted to work with was Simple Creek Ranch. I knew how to render raw to it. I do everything by hand from the source. So it's like baking, you know, by scratch. Um, and yeah, I busted it out. And then on the Friday, I went downtown to Oakland, got my business license, got zoning, got everything on my way up as I was traveling back up because I'm in North uh, Berkeley. I hit up three different shops and got in. And that was in 2014, May. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. Talk about like moving <laughs> fast. <laughs> Just so much inspiration and I just I just felt the power within me but you know um yeah the inspiration within me to make this and make it something beautiful and elevated and something that I want you know I love to travel I would travel internationally and all that stuff that you see at the airports were just you know laden with chemicals things to you know, put on your face and skin and I was like let's just do this fat and make it great now, what made you choose tallow over other fats like coconut or um, mm. or lard or, or or any of those? Like what what made you gravitate towards animal fats versus because particularly probably around that time, coconut was very popular. And, it, and I mean, it still is to a degree, but you were really seeing I was seeing a lot of skincare products come out with coconut around that time. So what made you go animal? Well, I don't have coconut trees within 150 miles around me. You know, I wanted to embrace regional. I mm. wanted to embrace local and then support my community of ranchers and farmers. Um, 
which is why I shortly after the after I started my business, I was at the farmers markets. And that's just the community I wanted to bring. You know, we're very particular about what radicchio we source from and what farm. Well, let's take that to the animal fat level as well. Yeah. Now when you and you're, um oh sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you, um, because you knew exactly what farm you or ranch to get the to the suet from. What were you looking for? You, you clearly you wanted hundred percent grass fed. What are what are some um, kind of quality markers you're looking for in that animal that then translates to the fat. Cause clearly, I mean, this is something we all have to remember, of course, is that whatever, whatever you put on your skin is one of your largest organs, but technically whatever you eat is of concern, but even more so is whatever you eat eats, right? Yeah. Um, quality soil, sequestering carbon, um, family owned ethical practices, you know, small scale, um, to a degree, Stepple Creek is, they're so wonderful. Um, and I love how large they are, you know, for what they are for being yeah. small scale. Um, and then just also the terroir, like, where are they? I mean, Simple Creek Ranch lies by the Tamales, uh, in Tamales Bay by Pacific Ocean, you know, beautiful water, beautiful grass beautiful sun yeah um, yeah are you and out there I a lot wanted... do, you, do you go out there and mm -hmm. kind of check on do you get to know any of the animals before they're slaughtered and do you, how how in depth do you get into the sourcing you know years ago i i was but now i'm it's i'm a pretty much a one woman show i, I have one assistant um i can't get to petaluma too often but I do work with um, the local butcher shop in Berkeley as uh, a pickup space. And so I, at least I know my butchers who actually do the whole animal butchery and supply me and give me that suet from Stemple Creek. Oh, Ross nice. Yeah, yeah. Now, curious, did you, uh, I'm sure you've had lots of testimonies of people using your product and you mentioned you started using your product because of your friends whose kids had eczema or issues, skin issues. Um, I'm assuming those were your first test people, right? That you first tested your product on yeah. those kids. And so what, what were the results and what kind of feedback have you gotten when people switch to using this animal fat and these clean ingredients? Just positive results, you know, something they've never felt before, which is um, which is real because this is something that has fallen out of favor. Um, but you go back about 200 years ago, this is what people use. They live close to the animals that they bred, I mean, raised, um, and they use, uh, the fats. And so, yeah, this is just kind of missing, but then it's something different yet familiar. I think with a lot of people, because they're like, Oh, like there's this core part of us that remembers animals animal fat around us you know did the, um, did the and friends, i chose oh, did, did did your friends kids those skin issues go away from using the product or how they yeah, did yeah yeah i gave them an unscented which is great to start with um even though i work with beautiful fine essential oils um and everything was great and then my husband was like the second uh tester and he loved it you know fair skin norwegian descent uh, very discerning when it comes to smells and ingredients. Um, and the other thing, I didn't want to bring um, coconut or nuts because not everyone resonates with those mm. plants and, and um, you know, plant-based material. But people all over the world, no matter what skin tone or culture, will resonate with a true animal fat. Have you... um, I love tallow. Uh, oh, yeah, to go get ahead, back go to ahead, that tallow. question about tallow, Actually, I chose that because I love the consistency. I love the feel. I've worked with so many different fats. I wouldn't want to put schmaltz on my skin. Uh, lard, I do work with lard. I work with pasteurized leaf lard. Um, but in the beginning, I wanted to do a tallow um, for my first decade of work. Um, the consistency is great. Lamb is too tacky. There's a smell to it. Um, but I believe... I. Yeah, the work that I do is like I feel the best because you don't smell anything. It feels great. 
Um, and then the blends of oils are really, really lovely. Now, some, sometimes tallow fat does have a smell. So what have you, I'm sure you've, have you ever experienced that? So how did you get it to not have a smell? Is it sourcing solely or what is it? Sourcing? Um, uh, I mean, I, I go quick. I get, they break down the cow, um, local butcher shop breaks it down on a Thursday. I pick up the suet Friday. I'm rendering 45 pounds on a Friday, every Friday for 10 years. Um, and it's just like the culinary world. You get that ingredient in, you work with it, you bring it out. Um, and so everything is like, you know, done quick, done fresh, done to the best quality. And I apply all of my techniques as a French chocolatier, as a chef, and I worked with chefs and chef Japanese before, during um, starting my work with Summer Solace. Did, um, so I think this, all so of that is, combined. Is this smell then sometimes the aging of the fat or what have you found? Because I'm sure when you first started, you you had to deal with some of these issues, you know, like what, or let me ask Correct. you that, like what were some initial issues when you first started that you had to solve? Um, getting the rendering process right, the way you want to do it. I don't work with any water. Um, I do a dry method and I work with copper vessels. Um, all of these things were in my mind because I always love, uh, holistic health and like Ayurveda and, you know, vibrational things like that. So I always knew what, um, you know, materials to work with, but yeah. Smell, smell is one thing, and you know, um, when in doubt, throw it out. Mm. And so, when it comes to that, then I'll just make, you know, a family candle or something. I, I do have little like grades where the the most purest quality grade goes to the balms, um, and then goes to the soaps and candles. But honestly, my work is all quality grade, so it's it's the same. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, working with your medium and knowing it well. Well, I imagine 10 years in, you 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 do know it well. So that's, yeah, I, I mean, I it's amazing <laughs> how you've been in it for 10 years. So how, what is the, how has the business changed in 10 years? Are you, you said you're, you're, you're mostly doing it on your own, but I imagine you've grown a lot, right? I have grown a lot. Um, I've always stayed positive. I mean, Everyone would poo-poo my work. Uh, not everyone, but, you know, it was a whole vegan trend for a moment. Um, and that's totally cool. I get it. I mean, that's part of my story as well. Um, but I just have such faithful and loyal and sweet customers who I feel, um, I feel, feel my products. And I think that they know, okay, this comes from the heart. This comes from the soul. Um this has intention in it. This has healing qualities to it. Uh, I don't whip my balms because that just invites air and bacteria and it gives you a false sense of volume. So my stuff is, you know, thick and hand poured and just luxurious. And I make the, this for everybody. What was yeah. the word you said? You don't, don't do what to your balms? I don't uh, whip it. You oh, know, whip um, it. So you don't yeah, want a lot of air. I, you don't want the air in there. No, no marshmallow fluff. Um, just nice, like dense. Um, and I make this for everybody, whether it be like a snow climber to like an influencer, you know, <laughs> from Sephora. So it's something that can just span both, you know, you know, interests. Right. Wow. Well, I'm excited. I now I haven't personally used your products yet, but I I know those that have, and I've spoken very highly of you, and that's why I was like, well, we got to get her on, or you know, in the organuary. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about the products you do offer? Okay, cool. So I do um, regenerative aloe based balms. Um, so I'm working so solely with uh, farmers and ranchers who uh, take care of the land. We take care of the soil and practice, um, I like to say traditional farming, you know, organic farming methods, regenerative agriculture. So I do balms for the hands, face, body, and hair. Um, I use it all the time, I use it on my face, hair, hands. The whole family does. 
No one leaves your the house. Your skin looks amazing, by the barrier. way. I know we're on a, a, a Zoom call, but still, I can tell even from this video that your skin is radiant. Thank you. Well, it's just, it's food. I do call it skin food uh, for a regenerative future um, because it's just something that we need. We need to wax this canvas, you know? Yeah. Um, I do beautiful soaps. Uh, I work with, um, I do about eight different soaps. Two of them are lard. Um, but I work with local ingredients. I mean, all of my uh, labels read like a farm to table restaurant menu. You know, uh, you know yeah, where the ranch cool. is from, you know where this is from. I work with Seca Hills in KP Valley, California, and they produce um, extra virgin olive oil. It's um, They are a tribal owned um, olive oil company. Um, so they do everything hands-on, owned by the tribe, um, stewards of the land. So I love working with them. So that's essentially my base. I work with Sonoma Herb Exchange um, for organic uh, calendula flowers from Northern California. So Sonoma Herb Exchange is um, a space for herbalists to source uh, high quality herbs uh, oh, and flowers. Nice. Yeah, so that'll always be my base. And then I do beautiful tallow candles with local beeswax. Uh, beeswax comes from my neighbor down the street. He's a master beekeeper from Yemen, and he also owns a um, uh, a bee and or a honey and beeswax shop here in um, Oakland. Oh wow! Well, I love how you really ha are walking your talk around local finds. I mean, your everything is. I mean, would you say it's within what a fifty mile radius, or what's what's the <laughs> mileage radius? Is it about fifty miles? Uh, actually 150, 150? Of okay, that's still that's fantastic but essentially yeah, yeah. that's, that's really this, good yeah this is a, a slow body care movement so I always I started that when I first started my business okay summer solace slow body care movement very similar to a slow food movement like I said earlier locavore regional and are you um, primarily using um just for practical reasons, when people buy your products, are you, obviously there's different products, but for example, the balms and stuff, are you primarily using those before you go to bed or when is the most optimal time to use particularly the skin products? Oh my gosh. Anytime. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's before bed. Yeah. It's in the morning. It's during the day. It's when I'm outside. It's when I want to feel, uh, this lovely barrier on my skin. Uh, it's my only moisturizer. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you don't find, um, like, I think there's a, like, would you say that there's kind of a myth around animal fats that uh, they're going to create, you know, acne or something, you know, that they're going to be too oily for oily skin? Are there, uh, you know, can you dispel any of these kind of myths that people might have around using um, animal fats on their skin? Well, it's probably because they want to promote their uh, you know, chemical laden stuff. products that come. Yeah, some things. You know what? Um, I would say uh, try, you know, there's so many factors when it comes to things like that. See your dermatologist, see your esthetician. Um, you can mix things up. Like you can, I still use like a vitamin C serum, but this is just my moisturizer. Um, because that's, you know, the, um, the mission and the intent resonates with my lifestyle and what I want from my food and my products. Um, when it comes to acne, so many different factors, hormones, I mean, they yeah. make us. So, <laughs> um, you know, try a little, try some on your hands, but eventually, you know, when you try something new, um, and something so like calming, I think it kind of shocks the body. And so, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with this. Yeah. When it's all. such a clean, clean product. Now I'm curious, uh, cause obviously we're talking about, you know, eating, you know, making sure that the products you're putting on your skin are things you would eat in a sense, you know, right. Very clean products. Um, what are you eating these days? So, so what is your diet like these days? Cause I imagine, you know, we're, I'm mentioning how radiant your skin looks. I imagine it's also cause you have a clean diet, which is, would you suggest, would you kind of, do you find that those really do kind of like go together that 
you want to be using these clean products, but you also want to be make sure you're eating clean as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, what is your diet now I, these days coming from that plant-based uh, so long ago? Seasonal, um, you know, what's in season, what the body needs, what's growing, which is seasonal, uh, meat, grass-fed meat. Um, right now it's winter time. So some braises, some stews, um, root vegetables, um, not gorging. So just eating until you feel good. Yeah. Um, delicious, uh, single origin coffee with ghee or grass fed butter. Um, yeah, just kind of, you know, really light things to get you going through the day and give you sustenance and energy. Um, I shop at the farmer's markets cause I work there every weekend selling. Um, so yeah, vegetables, meat, not too much, uh, grains. My husband does make sourdough bread, so I'll eat that or quinoa from a local vendor. Um, are you eating your yeah. organs? <laughs> I am. Oh, and I make a delicious liver pate. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> yes. Every time, you know, I roast a chicken once a week. It's usually a Monday night roast chicken and I get all the, you know, the giblets and the, um, the heart, the lungs, and I do the liver and I saute it with butter, a little bit of Dijon and brandy and parsley. Oh, nice. Good for <laughs> yeah. you. It's a, we do eat our organs. <laughs> Yay. All right. Well, I um you have graciously uh provided product for the winner of the Organuary. They're gonna get uh a part of your collection. It's like over it's like 110 plus shipping and handling covered. I mean, it's 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 a really fantastic uh giveaway products. Um, some of the seaweed tallow soap, the beeswax candles, the tallow balm, tallow lip balm, a uh, large size tallow candle and beeswax candle but for those that don't win you offered a 15 percent off code for them to shop on your store during is that just unlimited or is that just during the month of january unlimited what you're so great yeah. all right so so everyone you use the code and we'll put this in the notes but use the code eat pluck um and tell everyone where they should go to use that code uh to my website um www.summer s-u-m-m-e-r solace s-o-l-a-c-e and then the word tallow t as in tom a-l-l-o-w.com <laughs> or follow me on instagram at summer solace tallow awesome and are you on other socials or is instagram the main one you do instagram the main one um my mind or my brain just can't do too yeah, much, stick you know, with one. And, and I've got work to do. I've got production. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So anything, um, uh, anything new that you're working on? Like in, we just have a few minutes left, but any, any products that you, that aren't available yet, but that you're working on to get people excited? Yeah, totally. Um, I think a beautiful vanilla tallow and beeswax candle is needed, um, for the winter and Valentine's day and mother's day. Um, I also want to do a, actually I am doing a beautiful, um, a face and body oil, but I'm working with emu oil from a small ranch in Washington state. So not too far from Alaska and California. Um, and I wanted to incorporate that with some beautiful, um, uh, cold pressed oils from Northern California and, a, you know, beautiful scents. So something a little different that you could add maybe to your tallow balm or just you know, straight up. I've heard emu oil is very, uh, very nutritious as well. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I'm excited by it. I, yeah, I really like it. Uh, I really love animal fats. I just, I don't want to use anything else. Yeah, um, well, good for you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, everyone, 15% off uh indefinitely with eat pluck using the code but going to the summer solace um we'll have that all in the notes for people and thank you so much for joining us it's this is your first year doing organ you were ho hopefully not your last and um uh just very excited to be sharing your products with everyone um can't wait to 
hear anyone that uses them, make sure to share with us how, how, how you enjoy them and which, which sense you get. And because it sounds like you're making sense based on seasons, right? So you're kind of following your, your instincts around what, what you want to do and, and adjusting appropriately, right? Well, um, well, things do change, but essentially my base or my core line of balms are set for uh, practical uses. So really quick, I know we have four minutes. I do a pure unscented um, balm. I do a lavender, organic Bulgarian lavender. I have a chest and muscle rub called Feel Better. And that's based on traditional Chinese medicine. So it has beautiful clove and turmeric and ginger, a little bit of Ayurveda in there, but it helps to like, um, it's like an organic version of Vicks or maybe a tiger balm. So yeah. great for children. I do one called Chef and Gardeners with, rosemary and helichrysum and myrrh to help heal cuts and scrapes and burns from hardworking hands. Uh, masculine feminine is my signature scent, woodsy with frankincense, patchouli, myrrh, and Japanese cypress and sage. And so that's in the giveaway. Um, and then I do one that was in Oprah's magazine called Sacred Sense, and it helps with like hormonal balance, um, you know, during a cycle or during times where you just want to feel a little bit grounded um palo salt scrub yeah soaps and candles oh that sounds amazing sounds so delicious I, all <laughs> about abundance I can, <laughs> I can tell you have that culinary background because even the way you describe things makes me want to makes me hungry you know even though we're talking about skin <laughs> stuff I love it it's all so lovely I'm gonna send you some stuff <laughs> oh that would be awesome um well thank you again and uh I'm so excited to share your products Everyone watching this, listening to it, let us know um, when you try the products, uh, how, how you like making stuff. And um, I'm, I'm excited to hear from you. And thank you again for joining us on this nose to tell journey. Very, very excited to continue to push these regenerative farms and, and these ways that people can use the whole animal. I was just learning um, just I think yesterday someone was telling me something like 30% of the animal gets wasted. So it's always it's just it always warms my heart when I learn of companies that are trying to not waste these products because uh, we're already taking the animals lives. We, we, we got to make sure we honor the animal by using the whole animal. Right. Exactly. Yes. And I love um, I sell uh, climate beneficial sheepskins. I'm a part of a group called uh, Fiber Shed here in Northern California. So it's all it's also incorporating animal textiles, natural wool, um, but also regional textiles, flax as well. Um, so it's so lovely to bring, to show children and families, oh, there's also wool and fat, you know? Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Well, yeah. make sure to go to their website. I'm sure you list what farmer's markets you're at, right, as well? I, I do. Excellent. Yeah. Well, when you're in the Bay Area, go check her out. This is very exciting. Thank you again, Megan. Um, Thank and you. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs>